Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and in this video here, I'm going to be playing an online game with the Millennium Tournament 55 on Loot Chess. Now one thing I will say, I forgot to tell you, I, well, I told you in the last video, but I forgot to show you, if you do buy this board, um, you have to have the chess link module, which you may see my hand pointing at it here, or either something, a module such as the chess classics element, and obviously I've already put that up on the screen. Another thing I'll say is that, man, this thing is a pleasure to play with. I mean, it's a very premium product. You know, it's kind of like some people like to drive Honda Core. Some people like to drive BMW. So this would be like, if you like nice things like a BMW, this board right here would would, would really fit that bill. So, um, and also I had a question in the comments about the warranty and things like that. It's all Millennium boards that I'm aware of have a three year warranty. Now, when you're out of warranty and say, for example, of a piece, you know, you needed a new piece like the piece recognition the chip in it got went bad or something like that. For example, um, <coughs> they do sell replacement pieces. So you can buy this straight from Millennium's website, which I actually Millennium has a store now. So I'm, I'm just going to be linked in the description. And if you're in America, my preferred vendor for buying any type of chess product, particularly this board here, or any Millennium product, or any e-chess board would be Chess House. They have fantastic customer support, and they usually keep pieces for these boards in stock and can sell you an individual piece. And I will have an affiliate link for Chess House in the description and a 10% off code if you so choose to buy anything chess related. It don't necessarily have to be this board here. So with that said, let me go ahead and try to get me a new game here. I really like how they picked it where you can get a friend or anything here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say um, a detailed choice here. We're going to do uh, five minutes plus five seconds, not rated. I want to play as white because uh, I'm going to just leave it open here just to go ahead and get a game. I'll at least play a 1500, I guess, to um, you know have a deep, pretty good game here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit create challenge. And 5-5 five, five on Lee Chess, <coughs> excuse me, usually doesn't take too long. So let's hope that gets fired right up. I guess, but in the meanwhile, while this is waiting here, oh, well, there we go then. I'll go ahead and play D4. Everybody knows I'm going to play my D4 system here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and turn, hold, let me turn the tablet down. It's making noise. It, you, I think you can turn these sounds off. So it's kind of like a notification if you're playing. So, all right. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to say, the board is nice. The board is lovely. The pieces are nice. You know, it's kind of like an um, increased size of um, the exclusive. Oh, one thing I forgot to show you the last game is that if you touch this gold Millennium thing in the front, it'll show you how dark LEDs are set. And you can set LEDs. You see how, like, I can set it to low or high. So if I hold it, then you press it and hold it down. It'll go through, I think, eight levels. So I'm just leaving it on the brightest level so people can see it pretty well. All right, so let's play a little chess here. I mean, everything here is standard. Not too much analysis going on here, unless they make some, you know, off the cuff move that I hadn't seen yet. But as far as I can tell, everything here is pretty standard. <coughs> All right, castles. I actually played the computer today. I played um chess. No, um, the king today. And um, got a really interesting position. I lost the game, obviously, but um, I'm going to have to show you that position. I'm going to show you a position that I got. Not, not in this video here, but I'm going to show you that position I got. Although I didn't win it, um, it's a very instructive position. That'll be the next video that I have on this board right here. <coughs> we played A6, which is not bad. I mean, it's, it's playable, but I mean, I definitely would have um, probably... I mean, it just seems a bit odd in that, um, I mean, he could go for like a hedgehog structure, but I would have definitely went probably D6 first, probably in the word about A6 later. Um, I mean, his pieces on his back row look kind of funny with like none of his pawns are almost on the queen side of mood and all his pieces still sit. I don't know. It just looks a bit odd that my center is, you know, I have two pawns in the center. He haven't tried to contest the center at least a little bit. So let's see what he does here. Okay, nice. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, that's a good move. Definitely. Again, like I said, A6 is not bad. I just would not have done that. 
first. I would have probably pushed this first. So now he would have had a choice to take here. And then when I move out like now, it, it, it move order sometimes makes a difference. It may not have made too much of a difference in this case, but I think that um, generally speaking, contesting the center is always a, a better idea. Now, believe it or not, I've learned something new about this position. If I go knight to e5 now, there's a very sneaky move with knight to g4. So I'm going to test him out and see does he find it. Okay, because if he goes knight to g4, that means he's been doing his homework here. So I'm going to just go ahead and go here. I'm doing this just for the sake of just see what he does. Although you wouldn't really want to play this because you're giving them too much counterplay. Knight, black knight to g4 here is the move. Because, for example, it puts pressure on that. Um, for example, if I was to take the pawn on uh, c4, then he could take the pawn, my pawn on uh, d4. So. And he didn't take. That's pretty strange there that actually he, well, he just dropped a pawn pretty much for no reason. So, well, he didn't drop a pawn, but we're going to go ahead and take this here. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't find the move. And that move is tough to find, actually. I learned that by playing the computer. <laughs> so, um, and honestly, in practice, I've never seen anybody play it at Blitz. I'm talking about at any rate. And I played, I, with my rating level on Lee Chess, I typically play anywhere from 2,000 to 2,400 players, mainly 2,000 to 2,200. And I haven't seen anybody yet make that knight to um, G4 move, which is, which is strikingly odd, I think. So now I'm going to just go ahead and put a little pressure here on this pawn here, which he still can drop back here. Let's just see what happens if I go here. Let's just see what happens if I go here. I mean, really, he should develop his knight. I mean, his bishop now to h3 to force me to come back or force me to move or something. I probably just move my rook for right now. Because, again, when you got these kind of positions like this, especially as black, um, being that you got some open line that you got to go ahead and try to trade some pieces and get like something centralized here and he has really nothing centralized here yet well i'm not saying he can't but as it stands he don't i mean i gave him d4 and i'm gonna see what he does with it and that's because again it's a developing move believe it or not because if he takes that then i'm just going to pull my bishop to um e3 with tempo so he did not take that um yeah this oh <laughs> yeah some these openers are pretty for this position here is pretty pretty um tough if you don't find the right continuation so i'm gonna have to go ahead and take this here okay so he goes here now that's that's a developing move there for me because i'm gonna go he might try to trade. Oh, no, no, no. That's a sneaky little move if he goes here. Okay, I like that. <laughs> I got to say that's pretty good. Because if I go bishop to f4, he can go queen to um, b4. I don't have to take it, but um, what to do? Let's do this first. I'd rather do this first. Go to a3 first. I'd rather go to a3 first. So that way... Now, if he give me a chance to go to God, I don't want to give him any counterplay at this point. Okay, that's not bad at all, because now I can go. Let me see. One, two, three. Yeah, I can go here. Now I can go here. I got a tempo now. Now he he you know he's he's playing he's playing the open a little too aggressive at the wrong point, and and. <clears throat> That's what I see a lot of times with this opening is that, you know, when you should play an aggressive continuation, you know, um, let's see here. I'm going to just go here for a second first, just to just to just to see what he does. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my rook over and protect uh, B2. I can't let him have B2 because at any time I'm not too worried about my I'm not too worried about G my g2 square and i'm not really worried about a checkmate or anything like that he he ain't got no time to get over there anytime soon so that just won't happen okay he pulls his queen back okay let me go here now he could pull his 
bishop back to nah that wouldn't work because if you pull this bishop back to f5 i just go e4 so he pushes this now that's something now whenever you get a position like this you always want to go on this diagonal like this because it's very you know it just keeps um kind of keeps i really want to keep that bishop though but sometimes you got to do what you got to do because it does have a lot of pressure right there for right now All right, let's just go here. I gotta hurt. I gotta do something. So that's why I said since I'm playing blitz, I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna try to simplify the position now based on the time constraint we have here. All right, so he takes. That's not a bad move at all there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go like this. So if he takes, I'm taking with the knight is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to take with the knight. Well, I should take with the bishop. If I take, let's see here. Yeah, take with this here. Because then I trade bishop, trade bishops first. Because I don't think he has anywhere. Oh, he do. I have to take with, uh, oh yeah, I think I just, because he just went to, uh, yeah, I'm good. Okay, I can do this. Yeah, because if you go back knight to uh, b6, then I can just go queen to c3. Okay, I'm about to say, I, I thought I just lost a piece. But I didn't. Okay, he took, which is interesting. He could have he could have played that a little bit more dynamic by going uh, knight to c6. So I'll just go here for now. I would I would have preferred a more dynamic method there. Okay, now that rook on B one has done its job. I'm gonna have to bring it over to an open file next. He may threaten my <coughs> excuse me E two pawn, but I'm just gonna go E three. See how this goes. Pretty interesting game, I gotta say. I gotta say, this is quite the interesting game here. Well, he just dropped a pawn. Should I take that pawn or should I not? No, I won't take it. Actually, he dropped a pawn this way. Yeah, let me take this pawn here. Let me just go ahead. I'm getting low on time. I got to move now. I'm just gonna. I'm just going to kind of be quiet here a little bit so y'all don't mind for a second. Try to put his little, little, uh, oh man, I dropped my queen. He didn't even see that. <laughs> I got myself in time trouble. But anyway, that was pretty funny, actually. <laughs> All right. So um, let's go ahead back and distinguish any, any mate threat here. That was actually funny. <laughs> That was actually funny. I dropped my queen and he missed it. I was under time pressure there. See, that's why I play these unrated because again, but I did play the op open and everything. I played them, but it's still you can. That's the that's the the, the cruelness of chess. You can play that perfect <laughs> game and be winning and make that one crucial mistake and just you might as well just resign. That's the best um <laughs> that's the best option for you. Just go ahead and resign. But in this case, that didn't happen. So anyway, yeah, this is pretty much a um, relatively, he does, I think he might have a little bit of counterplay if he just go ahead and bishop, take bishop and bring his rook down to the second rank. But it's not going to be that much counterplay at all because, again, I'm just going to simply just um, begin pushing pawns pretty much. Let's see what he does here. Okay. He's going low on time now. He's down to, looks like, uh, let me check the clocks here, 59 seconds. 
I'm, I, I'm gonna need to reach out to Millennium to see is there something you can click just to make your whole screen a clock so you when you look at it you're not really looking at the board you just can set up the tablet or your phone in front of you I think that's one of the good things that um uh, DGT done with the with the peg with the app for the Pegasus they made it so like you'd have a nice clock to look at so I think maybe he was stunned by he missed the queen let's see what he does okay he's probably just going to randomly move out of nowhere here let's see what he does All right, looks like he's gonna run out of time here. Yeah, he ran out of time. That's an unfortunate end to that game. Um, <coughs> however, um, you know, it was pretty interesting to see how he played the opening because again, I have recently learned, or if you, if you go back and watch the earlier part of the video, I've recently learned some new things about this opening. And um, um, well, you know, that's what you practice for. That's what you play. Sometimes I play against a computer for to see what kind of things would they generate against you. And in this case, um, he didn't play the opening well at all. Um, I think he does what a lot of players do that I see is that they get aggressive or get not necessarily aggressive. They get they try to be dynamic at the wrong part of the game. He should have tried to be dynamic, you know, in the opening, so to speak, you know, playing the book moves and. And he didn't do that. By the time he got um, a little aggressive, um, he was um, pretty much lost at that point. Although I did drop my queen, but he missed it. So that's how, how it goes. And this is a blitz game, by the way. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is the Millennium Tournament 55 online with Lee Chess. And I hope you guys uh, will consider this board or any other Millennium products. They're fantastic. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.